What's up, duelists? Yesterday's video got a lot of you guys in a frenzy. There were some comments saying like, wow, I made a bajillion dollars off of Zeta Reticulant, or wow, I wanted to buy Zeta Reticulants, but I didn't buy them, and I was like, well, sheesh. I always forget that every time I post a video with like a deck that has a card that's like kind of rare in it, that I should probably buy that card beforehand, and I didn't buy the Zeta Reticulant, and I was like, damn. Okay, it's been a little while since I've done a market watch, I should do this not only for my own sake, but for your guys' sake. We're going to go ahead and take a look at an Edison format market watch. We're going to revisit some of the stuff I talked about in the last one, which was about two months ago. And we're going to talk about some stuff that I predict in the future of Edison format. So just reminder for you guys, this is not financial advice. Don't spend money you don't have or can't afford to spend. Uh, number two, I'm going to be focusing on like why something is worth a lot of money. And then number three, I'm going to be transparent with you guys as much as possible. I'm going to tell you guys if I own a card, if I plan on buying a card, if I don't plan on buying a card, or if I'm planning on selling a certain card at a certain point, I am going to tell you guys that. And I'm going to try to be as honest as possible so that you guys know that this is just me looking at data and, and sort of compiling things in a way that maybe is helpful to you if you're looking to build a collection or if you're looking to, you know, flip some cards, make some money. Because a lot of people have actually made a shitload of money off of Edison format and I realized that that is you know in part due to me in part due to the tournaments that are happening driving demand and in part due to you guys for being a community of people who enjoy playing the game and in order to enjoy playing the game at a competitive level you do need the cards so yeah I mean it drives demand it drives the market let's go ahead and just get right into things so last time when I started off the video I talked about the Edison fortune 500 we're gonna do a little recap of those cards that I mentioned with one or two new ones. Um, and I've, I've spreadsheeted them out here. So the cards I talked about in the last video, Kaius the Shadow Monarch Ultimate Rare, when I last talked about it, it was selling for around $368, $370. Today, it is selling for around $440 to $450. So it's up about 20% in the last two months, which is really, really good returns. If you bought Kaius the Shadow Monarchs at $370, and you are currently selling them for 440 to 450 you're up a good amount of money uh judgment dragon ultimates i had mentioned in the last one that i expected them to hold their price or diminish because lightsworn was waning in popularity in edison format uh and that's the why that i gave and like i said in the last video it is down about 12 percent judgment dragon ultimates were selling for about 400 dollars and now they're selling for about 350 dollars I don't expect them to go much lower than this. Again, I think like 300 to 350 is a pretty stable price for this type of card. It's a high rarity version of a chase card, but there also does exist that secret rare first edition. So there's a couple different chase rarities for this card already. And it's it's kind of hard to pick which one you really want if you're a max swag out light swarm player, you know what I mean? So uh, I don't think it'll ever really achieve the same heights as Kai's the Shadow Monarch. Not only due to the fact that it's semi-limited, but also because it's not widely played, and also because there's competition for that highest rarity slot. Another card that I talked about was Stardust Dragon, uh, the Ghost First Edition. They were selling for about $2,000 to $2,300 two months ago. Today, they are selling for about $3,000. So they're up about 30%. This is for near mint copies, keep in mind. But that is insane. <laughs> it's actually just crazy. Uh, it's crazy because I want one. <laughs> so I'm like, God damn it. It's just getting worse. <laughs> just gonna go, stop buying them, guys. Start just start selling them. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah, if you bought, if you had the capital to buy a bunch of really high end stuff, you'd be up about 30% on Stardust Ghosts, which is uh, pretty insane returns. Super Nimble Mega Hamster, Super First. They were selling for about $14, $15. Uh, two months ago, they were up to about $18, $50 to $20 today. So they're up about 20, 30%. Absolute zero common. This is one that I didn't mention two months ago, but I went back and got the data. Two months ago, they were selling for about $8. Today, they're selling for about $13. I'm going to talk about absolute zero a little bit more later in this video. So stick around for that. But they're up about 63%, which is pretty insane returns, actually. If you think about it, in just a two month span, this card has gone from worth $8 to almost $14, which is crazy. Right goes super first. This is a card I actually had expected to go up, but it didn't. So I was wrong. I was definitely wrong about right goes super first. Uh, they were selling for about $30 two months ago, and they're selling for about $30 today. And I think that part of the reason is because a lot of the Ryko decks in Edison format are 
not that popular, honestly. Uh, if you look at the top most played decks right now, you've got Diva Hero, you got Gemini Alias, you got Frogs, you got Black Wings. None of these decks play Raikou, so it's like not a lot of people looking for it. Yes, Vayu Turbo does play it, but that's about it, really. Light Sworn too, to a degree, sometimes Fairies, but again, like these are these are not the most common decks, and they're not the decks that the majority of players are looking to pick up, and so as a result. The people trying to swag out their decks probably already have their Raikou Super Firsts, or they aren't having trouble because there just isn't as high of a demand. Debris Dragon Ultimate Rare is a card that I was interested to see where it went in the last video. I can't remember if I said it was going to go up or go down, but it went down a significant amount. I think there might have been a buyout around the time of the last video. Uh, the cheapest ones online back then were about $97, $95, $97. And um, nowadays, they're selling for about $65, $67. So they're down about 30%, which is pretty cool. If you're a Debris Dragon Enjoyer and you want to have that swag out Ultimate Rare like I do, you can get them for pretty cheap. So that's tight. A card that I predicted would go up because I thought it was just a little bit undervalued was Drill Warrior Ultimate First. And it did. It did go up. It went up about 44% from $38 to around $55 for Ultimate First in the last two months. Now, Deep Sea Diva is probably the biggest jump in the Fortune 500 that I did not predict. Uh, this card for the Super Rare, well, I should mark that actually, this is Super Turbo Pack. This is a Super Turbo Pack Deep Sea Diva. They were selling for around $97 two months ago, and now they're selling for about $170 a piece. So they're up 75%, which is insane. A lot of this has to do with the amount of decks playing Deep Sea Diva right now and just the prominence of the card. When you do play it, you do need three copies of it. So it's a card that you can't just have one max rarity. You can't just have two max rarity. You have to have all three max rarity. And it's a card that is, you know, a little bit harder to find. So being a turbo pack foil, that is. Uh, definitely a card that has a lot of demand as of right now. I'm curious to see if it even goes up further from here. $170 for a Turbo Pack Super is, it seems overvalued to me, personally. But Deep Sea Diva is a really strong card. So we don't, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. Bionic Dual Terminal Ultra, I had mentioned in the last video that these were a little bit undervalued. And uh, apparently I was right. They were selling for around uh, $98, a little under $100, two months ago. And as of today, they are selling for about $138. They're up about 40% from two months ago and then i've included these last two cards because these are two cards that i do want to keep on my radar moving forward ultimate rare dark arm dragon now we recently got a pretty cool like jank starlight version of dark arm dragon printing um in a in a recent set so that might have caused some people to not really want to hold on to their ultimate as much as possible because it does have that hefty price tag of or it did have that hefty price tag of a little under 400 dollars now it's down to about $330, so it's down about 13% um, since two months ago. And then Black Rose Dragon goes first. Because I saw how much the Stardust Dragon goes first jumped, I want to keep an eye on Black Rose Dragon goes first. Now there's not a lot of data on TCG Player about this card because in the last like four or five months, there hasn't been a single first edition near mint one sold. So all I'm going off of is what's listed there and what people have told me. So I know it's worth roughly $2,000 for a nice, like, near mint first edition ghost one. So something to look forward to in future market watch. So this is kind of like the Fortune 500. These are the cards that will probably always be a part of Edison format in some capacity. Whether or not they stick on this list or not, that uh, is ultimately up to me, <laughs> basically. But... And if there are any cards that you think I should add to the Edison Format Fortune 500 list for future tracking, future paying attention to, uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Let's move on to the next portion, which is going to be droughts or cards that need reprints. There are quite a few of these nowadays. There are quite a few of these. And Edison Format, when I first started playing it in 2020, you could build basically any deck you wanted for roughly $20 which is insane because nowadays you definitely cannot do that. Uh, you're looking at, you know, maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars to build a deck, which is still, if you compare it to modern Yu-Gi-Oh, incredibly affordable, but it is nowhere near as like, you might as well buy it because it's so cheap as it was in 2020, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these cards that need reprints. And then later I'm going to show the effects of what reprints have done to the prices of certain cards. 
So the first card that I think needs a reprint is Gemini Soldier. This card is a common from the structure deck Warrior Strike. It's the only place it's been printed. There are very few listings on TCG Player. It is a common. A motherfucking common. And it is going for about eight, nine dollars. That's ridiculous. This card is played in one deck. Like what what the heck? Now I don't get me wrong, I love the Gemini deck too. I think that deck is super fun. It's like probably one of the most fun decks to come out of the last few months. But wow, that's that's a lot of money for a Gemini soldier, you know what I mean? Like that's that seems kind of inflated if you ask me. Pop the bubble perhaps or reprint maybe Konami please. This is uh me me just soft begging. All right, next card, also Gemini card, Black Brute Drago. Wow, what an explosion in price. You see near mint unlimited being sold for $25. This card was not worth a dollar like a fucking 6 months ago, right? How much was it? Yeah, it was worth about a dollar 6 months ago. So to go from a dollar to $30 in uh what what was essentially an overnight boom. I don't want to say an overnight boom. It was over the course of a month, really. From June 5th to about July 5th, this card went from $1 to $30, which is pretty crazy. It's got one printing, definitely needs a reprint. You can see here the first edition copies are listed for $57 a piece, which is astounding. That's actually so incredibly high for this card that sees I'm going to be honest, very little play. <laughs> Just like, uh, it's, it's in one deck. It's like, obviously you have to play two or three in that one deck, but like, uh, it's just, that is just a lot. That is just a lot of money for this card. Um, it's funny because we're talking about, you know, or I was talking about how in 2020, I could go build a whole Diva Hero deck for under $20. And it wouldn't be an issue. Nowadays, I can't even order one Black Brute Drago for my, like, fun Gemini deck. <laughs> without spending more than that you know what i mean like it's insane how much the edison market has boomed and how much it has gone up i get messages like almost every single day with like dude thank you so much like i made so much money off of my old collection and that makes me really happy in a lot of ways but it also makes me really sad because i want to build these decks <laughs> i'm so torn but i'm really happy that you know people who have like black fruit dragos nowadays are they're getting they're getting their lunch paid for you know that's pretty hype that's actually pretty cool that this card is worth a lot I would like to see a reprint, but if I do see a reprint of this card, I'd like to see a cool rarity, maybe something with a flashy name. That'd be kind of sick. All right, next card. Got to talk about it, the elephant in the room, and I'm not talking about my second channel, uh, the Zeta Reticulant. This is a card that I uploaded a video on yesterday, and immediately, you guys went crazy. How much was this card yesterday? $4. How much is this card today? $25. Overnight, 5x. What what the hell? What the hell? I think this is the most extreme buyout. You know it's extreme because I uploaded the video and the buyout was literally happening. Well, you can't see the times on here. You gotta see, oh, hold up. I have this pulled up on the second part. Look how many were bought since yesterday. That is insane. It wasn't even 24 hours ago. It was like 16 hours ago. And look how many were bought. That's nuts. There's over 100 copies of this card have sold. And for over market value, like that's crazy. That's like, look, people buying it for two seventy five, and then here, FOMO, FOMO hits hard. People buying it, someone bought one for thirty eight dollars. Yesterday it was two seventy five. What? Nothing changed. I just played one match with it on camera. This is crazy. This seems like, in my opinion, um, I don't know. I don't know. And don't get me wrong. I think the deck I uploaded with is legit. I think this card is legit. I think this card is good. Is this card worth that price tag? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. It doesn't have the tournament results to back it up. It doesn't have um, the representation in tournaments to like see if it's going to actually do anything. Who knows? Maybe the person who bought it for $38 is going to regret it in a couple weeks. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Buyouts are always a crazy phenomenon. and I just didn't realize the... Back to what I was saying is I didn't realize how much power I had until like yesterday. I posted the video. The buyout happened before the video had been up long enough for people to even watch the match with the deck. I could have played like six matches with that deck and lost all six. <laughs> but the buyout happened before anyone even had a chance to watch those matches, which is insane. They just saw the thumbnail and like they were like, fuck it. I'm not getting owned like I did with Amaryllis or whatever, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. But 
damn, this is crazy. I, I wish I wish I understood. I wish I understood better FOMO marketing or FOMO like uh, like scarcity purchases or whatever. This is something that like I saw during the pandemic, probably for the first time in my life, where people were like panic buying like what is it the the goods like literally like hand sanitizer and like toilet paper and stuff. And I'm seeing that same effect here with fucking Zeta reticulant. You guys can live without Zeta reticulants. You don't need to be spending forty dollars on a Zeta reticulant. Just play Black Wings like everyone else. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> anyway, this card is sick. I think the deck is sick. Um, I'm curious to see where this card's price will end up. Uh, but buyouts, I, that's that's crazy. That's just crazy. It's just crazy to see it in real time. All right, next card, Avenging Knight Parshat. This card definitely needs a reprint. The commons going for about eleven dollars. Um, yeah, it just needs a reprint. It's a one of in a couple of decks. I personally want to get one, but I, I feel like just just throw it in like a tournament pack or something. Konami, please. I know you watch these. Please just please do me a solid. We need Avenging Knight Parshath. We also need Ancient Sacred Wyvern. These two cards would make the fairy deck much more accessible for people who are trying to play something fresh in paper. I love fairies. I want to see more people play it. But right now the price is kind of being gate kept due to these two cards. Uh, Avenging Knight and Ancient Sacred Wyvern add that extra $25 tax onto the deck when these cards realistically should be pennies. They're they're just not cards that see any amount of play realistically. Next card that absolutely needs a reprint if this format is to survive in the hands of the people is Substitute. The fact that this card got unbanned and like when did it get unbanned? I don't even know. Was it over six months ago? Yeah, it was like... When did this card get unbanned? I don't even remember. What, when the fuck did that happen? It was so long ago. And they still haven't reprinted it. Like, what was the point of unbanning it if you're not going to reprint it? I don't get it. I don't get it. This card needs a reprint. Look at this. You're paying fucking $32 plus $5 shipping for one bitch-ass substitute? What? Like, what is going on? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Konami, please. Please. Please reprint my boy. Reprint the little toad. Please. What I gotta do? What I gotta do? You want me to throw a throw an Edison tournament or some shit? I'll do it. Just fucking reprint my boy, all right? Substitute needs a reprint. Let the frog players live. Let them be. Let the frog players have fun. I think we need to accept them for who they are and let them, you know, have their substitutes. All right, next card, pulling the rug. Jesus fucking Christ. Just reprint it already, please. It's been over a year. This card is way too expensive look it's fucking out of stock oh wait i think it might be out of stock because i have first edition mark let me see clear filters dude this is the rare version of it going for 24 dollars it doesn't there are three printings of this card there are three printings and the lowest rarity is so much this card isn't even well i mean i've main decked this card before so i can't say it's not a main deck card but it is a key sideboard card for a lot of reasons currently in the meta and just in general in this format it is a key sideboard card, and I think for the health of this format, this card needs to be reprinted. I don't care. Throw it in a speed duel set, make it the ugliest fucking printing I've ever seen, give it a shitty alt art. I don't even care. Just give us something so that we can play the game for cheap like we used to be able to two years ago. We will support the product if it is in it. Konami, please. I am begging you. I am literally begging you. All right, next card. Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis. Now this one, because I own them, don't reprint this card. Don't. Please, Konami. If you're watching this, I need this bad boy to hit $100 each so I can sell them. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. One printing on a super rare. You know what really makes me sad about this card only having one printing? Is that it's literally gatekeeping people from playing what I think is one of the coolest decks. <laughs> it's really annoying. It's really, really annoying because this deck is so fucking cool. Like, the Amaryllis Burn deck is so sick to watch. It's so sick to play. It's a good time. Like for both people playing, it's like always a tense match. I love playing with and against this deck. It's interactive in cool ways. It's a unique deck that really shines in only this format, if I'm going to be real. And it's, you know, being gatekept by this like, bruh, ain't nobody spending $50 for a light play to Amaryllis. Like that's, bruh, you know what I mean? Like that's just like, come on, man. Just reprint it, reprint it. I don't even care. I'll take the loss. I'll take the loss, just reprint my boy so I can see more people playing this really sweet deck. That's all I'm asking. Okay, next card. Trap does shoot. It it's been so long. It's been so long. It's like that that um that meme. It's been three thousand years. 
wait, I get it. It's banned. But you reprinted Branded Explosion. That means you can reprint banned cards. So why can't you reprint Trap Dust Shoot? Question mark. I think people will know that this card is banned, even if you print it. And I think people won't be mad if they pull it if you reprint it because it'll be worth a lot of money <laughs> like they won't even be mad <laughs> like if you reprint this for example as like a collector's rare people will be fucking going nuts for it like that would be like the chase card in an entire set it would sell a set on its own you could print the shittiest set of all time you could print a set with zero playable cards in any format have a collector's rare trap dust shoot and that pack would sell like hotcakes like it would people would want just for that collector's rare trap dust shoot that high rarity so I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Even though this card is banned now in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe they just don't want to confuse people. Maybe they don't want to tease people, get people thinking the wrong thing. But come on, man. You got OTS Time Wizard. You know you know where the players are at right now. You know everybody's playing Edison right now. We got RBETs happening. You threw the big-ass thing at Nats. There were thousands of people there at Nats playing Edison. Like, come on. Like, you, you know now. You know. Konami. I know you're watching this. All right. Next one. Absolute zero. Absolutely fucking reprint this guy. Seriously, like, come on, man. $12 for a common, $13 for a common. And this card is played in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, you have every excuse to reprint this. It's a fan favorite card. People would go crazy. Give this bad boy a collector's rare. People would love that. Heroes recently got top 32 at the main event at Nats in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Print absolute zero. That's, that's, there's some steps missing in there, but that's my brain. That's how my brain's working. It's like, just reprint my boy. Reprint him. Give him, give him a beautiful... Oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine an OTS ultimate, ultimate rare absolute zero? Could you imagine it? I would lose my goddamn mind at the sight of that. That would be like, that would be truly ascending. That would be truly ascending. Alas, we have to settle for fucking $15 commons. All right, next card, Royal Oppression. Uh, don't reprint this. I want people to stop being able to afford this card. All right, next card, Test Tiger. Yeah, this is one of those cards that's like, it is cheap-ish, right? It's like three, four dollars each. But like, if Glad start to do well, <laughs> this card will not be cheap. <laughs> like, if if this deck starts to do well, this card will go up a lot because there's only the one common printing, and as we've seen with cards with one common printing, like Avenging Knight Parshath, it doesn't matter if the deck is even slightly popular at all. The card will be worth way too much. So. Test Tiger could use a reprint for all my Glad fans out there. Not myself, because I hate that deck, but for all my Glad fans out there. All right, next card, Dark and Dragon. This is a weird one because, um, you know, it's been reprinted a couple times, but it's still kind of annoyingly expensive. It's like $9, $10. Uh, yeah, it looks like this one is about, the cheapest is about $9. for. This is the cheapest printing of it, by the way. So this is the cheapest Dark and Dragon you can get is $9. That's a lot of money. I don't know what to say about it. That's a lot of money. A common one of these will go a long way. Not right now, because I think $9 is... It's okay. It's fine, right? Like, $9 sucks, but it's still fine, you know? But in the future, this card could be, like, $20, $30 for, like, the lowest rarity. And that would be really annoying. You know what I mean? Like, it'd just be like, damn, I gotta spend $30 on this shit-ass fucking Mega Pack Dark End Dragon? You think I want to do that? That doesn't make me happy. That like automatically deters me as a potential player of your game. Konami, please reprint Dark End Dragon. All right, last card that needs to be reprinted or doesn't need to be reprinted depending on your stance on this card. Sky Scourge Norlaris. This card picked up a lot of hype recently off of the win at the European National Championship thing, event, tournament that they had there. Um, yeah. I don't love playing against this card. I'm going to keep it a buck with you guys. But I own them. Well, I guess since I own them, I don't want it to be reprinted. Yeah, don't reprint this card. I think I've made up my mind. Don't reprint it because I want the ones that I own to be expensive. And then on top of that, I also don't want to play against this shit. All right, time to reflect. Time to reflect. It's reflection time. I'm going to talk about some of the cards that I talked about in the last Market Watch. Cards that I thought would go up, cards that I thought would go down, etc. Talk about Reckless Greed. Super rare. This is the only foil printing of Reckless Greed. Since then, Reckless Greed has won two of the last, like, four major events. Which is a lot, if you think about it. That's half. Two out of four. 50%. 
If you simplify that fraction, it's one out of two. Every other tournament is won by reckless greed, if you think about it within the recency bias. This is the only foil printing of this card. How much has it gone up in the last two months? A couple dollars. So, meh. Yeah. Mm. Not bad. If you picked them up, not bad. Let's see how much the near mint ones are going for. Yeah, not bad. If you picked them up, you're probably up. Especially if you picked up first edition copies. They're now up to about $6. There's only a few remaining on TCG Player. And the next highest price points are about $17 to $20. This is a great card. I think Reckless Greed has a home in a lot of different decks. I recently played against it in a Frog deck, and it actually did very well there. I've recently played against this card in Dragon decks, Blackwing decks, and a lot of other decks. I think it's very slept on. I think it's one of the strongest cards at improving your chances of just having that raw resource material for your big OTKs, your big pushes. I could see this card in Lightsworn. I could see this card in a bunch of different, like, powerful strategies that can just, like, throw a bunch of cards on the field and go crazy. Uh, I definitely think that the super rare of this card has potential to even go up further from here. So I was pretty correct that it was going to go up. I thought it would go up faster given the results it's been having, but um, it is still going up. So half right, I'll give it a half right. Gear Town, ultra rare, the only foil printing of it. Eh. Did not go anywhere. Um, I was wrong. But, you know, it was a penny stock. I told you guys to buy it at 20 cents, and now it's 25 cents, so you guys lost 60 cents. I'm sorry. My bad. I thought Gear Town would do more. It didn't. Uh, I think Gear Town is still busted, but it's not that busted, apparently. All right, next card to reflect upon. Warrior of Atlantis. This is a card that I didn't tell you guys to buy, but it is a card that I bought myself, thinking that they would never reprint it. Boy, was I fucking wrong. Um, <laughs> they immediately reprinted it. I was thinking, damn, they can't reprint this card because the text is just doesn't make sense, right? You can discard this card of the graveyard, add one, a legendary ocean from your deck to your hand. A legendary ocean doesn't exist as a card because its name is technically always Umi. So this card, in theory, just doesn't have an effect. You know what I mean? Like, in theory, this card breaks the rules of the game. And so I was thinking, like, they'll never reprint this card, right? Because why would they want something that that breaks the rules of the game, but apparently they, they did for Speed Duel, so. Cool, thanks Konami. Thanks for the fucking Warrior of Atlantis reprint. Now my ultimates are worth less than what they are when I bought them. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you reprinted Warrior of fucking Atlantis and not pulling the rug. All right, Junk Archer. This is a card I wanna reflect upon because this is a card that was very expensive prior to the reprint. And now that we've got a reprint, the card tanked back down to a healthy price, which makes me happy because I love Junk Archer, I love Quick Draw decks, I want to purchase a Junk Archer myself, I'm probably going to do that after this video, and I think him being back down to about 10 to $12 is a very ha healthy price for his max rarity, which is this Ultra Rare. This is the max rarity Junk Archer, the cheapest Junk Archers go for about 5 to 10 cents, which makes me very happy. Please make the game more affordable, make it more accessible, especially Edison format. Edison format right now, in my opinion, is the most accessible format for new players. If it's not affordable, then uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. All right, next up, speculation. We're getting into the, the good stuff. This is what everybody wants to hear. This is what everybody is here for. They're like, okay, Keegan, tell me what to buy. Yes, I saw the thumbnail. I want to make a bajillion dollars on the next buyout. Uh, the first card I want to talk about that I would speculatively pick up is Goyo Guardian Dual Terminal. This card has done nothing but go up the last few months. It kind of plateaued in August here, but you know it has these little plateaus, as you can see at the beginning of the month, right? It has a plateau in July, plateau in August, but it's like steadily gone up. And I think this card is pretty reasonably priced at $14, $15 roughly. Oh, that one's $16. $16 for a near mint is pretty reasonably priced. I think this card definitely has room to be like a $30 to $40 card. So I think that this card could see a 50 to 100% return on your initial investment and probably stabilize somewhere around there. That's just my prediction for a card like this. I think this card looks nice. It's a great alternative to the ultimate rare. It looks good if your extra deck is mostly dual terminal cards it looks good if you have dual terminal bryonic or whatever dual terminal cadaster it matches 
Um, and I think it's just it's just a nice looking card that goes in every extra deck. It's got the pre errata text, which is something I'm going to talk about here in a second. Uh, a lot of older players, old school players, prefer to have the pre errata text. And I think this print of Goyo Guardian, in my opinion, is the nicest print. I, I really don't like the Ultimate Rare or the Ultra Rare as much as I like the Dual Terminal or the Laminated Foils, but that's just my own personal preference. And that's kind of why I'm including it in the speculations because I do think that this rarity of this card will go up. The next card I want to talk about is actually an interesting one. It is the Retro Pack 2 printing of Necro Valley. Now, it's interesting for a couple of reasons. The first reason it's interesting is because there are three different texts of Necro Valley on this page. <laughs> they have the wrong text here that's not even the text that's printed on this print. And then they have the new errata text. And then they have the text that's on the... <laughs> so as you can tell, the point I'm going to make here is that Necro Valley is a confusing as fuck card because it's had 18 million errata. Not even TCG player can print the right one and the wrong one, basically. So um, it's funny that this is the case but this version retro pack 2 the rare one um is the actual errata that is in edison format it has the text that you need for edison format so because of that i think this is like the chase necro valley in my opinion this is like the best necro valley you can have for this format if you want to play grave keepers or some gear town decks that play necro valley or anything that plays necro valley basically flamvel keepers whatever as you can see i've added three to my cart I'm going to be purchasing a set of these after this video, so full transparency. I just want to have a set of Necro Valley that, like, when I'm playing against my opponent, they're like, what does Necro Valley do in this format? I can just hand them my Necro Valley and they can read it. I think there's a lot of inherent value in that, and I think because of that, the Retro Pack 2 printing of Necro Valley is the uh, optimal printing, and I think as a result of that, it will probably go up if Gravekeeper starts to see more play, or if... Um, more people just want them for other decks or whatever. So I think this is a good speculative pickup just because it has the right text for Edison format on it. And I know that that has a lot of value. Another speculative pickup I want to talk about is Shiny Black Sea. This is a really interesting card um, for a lot of reasons. I actually think this card is fantastic. I think this is a very good card. It's basically a grave trap. It's not a hand trap or a board trap or anything. It's a grave trap. And it interacts well with a couple of different, like, key components of Edison format. So, first off, a lot of decks that want to play Ryko can pretty easily slot this card in as just, like, a high-value mill. A lot of decks that play even Quick Draw can maybe play this card. This card is very good against some of the Hallmark decks of the format, Bayou Turbo, Black Wings, and Zombies. It's exceptional against those three decks. It's pretty good against some other decks, like Quick Draw, um, granted, those decks can just make Black Rose, or they can make um, Stardust Dragon to avoid the Shiny Black Sea, but they're kind of forced to do that, if that makes sense. And then on top of that, this card does help um, mitigate certain things. Where, where was I going with this? Where was I going with this? It does help, like, Light Sworns deal with, like, OTKs. The decks like that. Decks that like to mill. I think this is a slept on card in Edison format in general, and it only has one printing that's not a lot of money. All the other printings are Duelist League, like, rares. And they're all, like, 8 to $10 each. This common printing is the only, like, affordable printing of it. So if you want to have copies of this card to try it out for, like, the Vayu Turbo Mirror, it's, like, not a bad sideboard card, honestly, um, in a lot of decks. Uh, pick it up. It's, like, a couple cents, you know? Like, penny stock it might be worth a dollar in a year who knows maybe a deck wins with this card and all of a sudden it's like hype as fuck there was a deck that already did well with it early on i think in 2021 in one of the first tournaments and i don't expect that this card is going to disappear forever it's probably just hiding in the shadows behind your refrigerator all right next card trade in collector's rare along with the amaryllis burn uh deck playing trade in the norlaris decks also play this card and this is the maximum rarity of trade in it looks very nice in person, and it goes for about $70. I do not think that this is the ceiling for this card. I actually think that this card could be worth a lot more. I think this could be a very, very expensive and rare card. Um, because n although Amaryllis is very expensive, there's some, like, I want to say there's some allure to a deck in Edison format being, like, a very expensive deck. You know, there's always that one deck in every format where it's like, 
yeah, this deck is like straight up, you know, you're spending a lot more than you should be to be playing this game. You know what I mean? And if Amaryllis is going to be that deck, like Amaryllis is already expensive. Trade-ins are probably going to be expensive. You know what I mean? Like you got to have the money bags deck, whatever format you're playing, whatever game you're playing, you got to have Mr. Moneybags deck. And I think trade-in kind of fits the bill. You know, it goes in that deck with the expensive Amaryllis. It goes in the decks with the expensive Norlaris. It just goes in the cool guy. I have a lot of money to flex on this game uh, decks. And as a result, I think the maximum rarity of this card definitely has room to grow. I'm not sure how much, but it's gone up a lot since uh, Nats already. You know, you can see Nats, Amaryllis performs, and now it's up a solid, I want to say $10 since Nats for the near mints, basically. So, uh, good shit. This card is very powerful. It's one of the strongest draw cards that's n not limited in Edison format. It's also played in Dragon Turbo, which is... Um, another elephant in the room it won the last two rbets so if you want to play that deck at max rarity trade-in is the card that you're gonna need so yeah this is definitely a good speculative pickup if you have the money i think i think this card has room to grow for sure and that's going to be the last card for today's market watch video um, a little bit shorter than the last market watch video a little bit less for me to talk about outside of just me yelling at whoever in the void listens to me that reprints these cards I think that there's there's a lot to talk about in Edison format with regards to like how much certain cards are worth and I, I don't really like tracking stuff that much like making this spreadsheet gave me like fucking PTSD from like thinking about working you know at an office cubicle job you know what I mean like I just don't like spreadsheeting stuff I don't like data in general it's very fucking f fucking boring I, I'm sorry like obviously there's stuff to be like looked at in this data but like you're deriving oftentimes certain things from data that like may or may not mean anything like do we know why judgment dragon is down 12 percent no we don't it could be a million different reasons it could be just that the 30 people who owned this card and decided to sell them for less in the last two months were just like broke for some reason like that's literally it i, I don't know why like we don't know why you know what i mean we can't derive anything from this data it's just like kind of cool to look at and um overall it looks like you know, the Edison Fortune 500 is still trending upwards at a pretty decent rate. It looks like um, as long as there are major events, major tournaments happening for Edison format, that these cards are going to be worth something. So you guys aren't just going to be buying these cards and having them, you know, completely disappear in value overnight like, like sometimes happens in the modern format. You know what I mean? Like this format's going to be around forever and these tournaments are going to be around forever. So that's a good thing overall. And I think as a result... If you're buying cards for this, you could do a lot worse. You could do a lot worse. Thank you uh, for watching. Thanks for your guys' support, and thanks for making this type of video. Like, I got some got some hype clickbait. The fucking Zeta reticulum. I'll probably clickbait someone's fucking comment where they were like, "I have a hundred of these or some shit," and it's like, "Ah, great, bro. You made four grand because I posted a fucking." <laughs>